right, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. We have the guys from Open Air Theology, Jeffrey Rice, Braden Patterson, and Haps Addison. It's going to be a great one. Stick around. See what's going on. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Will you recant or will you not? Since your majesty and your lordships desire a simple reply. I will answer. Unless I am convinced by scripture and by plain reason and not by popes and councils who have so often contradicted themselves. My conscience is captive to the word of God. To go against conscience is neither right nor safe. I cannot. And I will not. Or I can. Here I stand. Here I stand. I can do no I can do no other. Welcome to the Here I Stand Theology Podcast, where we are a podcast devoted to a pointed and spirited debate with the funky Latin music going on just a little bit there. We are here at the Here I Stand Theology Podcast. We are a ministry of the local church, Reformata Baptist Church, which means this, that we are accountable for what we say and for what we do to the body of Christ there at Reformata Baptist Church. So, we have, as we mentioned in the intro there, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. We've got the guys from Open Air Theology. We're going to bring them on here in just a minute or two. Uh, but this is going to be a, uh, a recorded episode. But we do want you to be sure to do this if you would. Don't forget to go over to our YouTube page. Like, watch a video, like it. Ring the bell and subscribe so that you will be notified when we put out new content. It would greatly help the algorithm, our ag- algorithm there on the YouTube machine. So if you would do that. With that being said, let's go ahead and introduce the guys here tonight. Let's bring them in. Here we go. Let's bring these guys in one by one. Here they are, the guys from Open Air Theology. Let's switch haps and braiding around there again. There we are. There we are. How are y'all doing tonight? Awesome. Doing well. Thanks for having us, brother. Awesome. Thank you for being here. So glad that y'all are here. Been looking super looking forward to this. This is this is great. <laughs> So, um, well, I know y'all have been busy. We want to get 
kind of right to it, uh, right, right here from the start. As you know, or if you don't know, just in case, if you keep up with, with the Here I Stand Theology podcast, you know uh, that when we have a guest on the episode, we usually don't have multiple guests like this. So this is, this is like big time right here to have a, a whole <laughs> theology, open air theology group with us here. We ask a very, very important question that kind of sets the tone, sets the mood, sets the stage for the entire podcast, and here it is. So let's just let's just go around the table here. So Jeff, if you and Braden had to arm wrestle, who would win? <laughs> Dude, Braden's a fireman. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> but Braden pointed up. So Braden, how I'm about humble. you and Haps? He's, about, humble. <laughs> He's a little more humble than I am. I've how been about, told I'm the best humble person in the world, and I just can't, <laughs> can't agree anymore with that. Yeah. Moses was the most humble person that That's ever right. lived. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Braden is proud of his humility. Like that. That's right. I take a lot of pride in I'm not. Like, not, like it's just, it's just yeah. not there. So, Braden, what about you and Haps? Person. If you and Haps had to arm wrestle. Oh, man. I don't want to. You saw that heresy block he was doing in that intro. He, he, oh, man. Yeah. Dude. Jufu 101, man. Beat me till sorry. next Saturday. I drink milk. Arm wrestling. I drink milk. <laughs> yes, I love you do. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, and obviously, we we have determined that Braden is the youngling among us. That we oh. are that we are the, we are That's elderly right. over on this side. <laughs> over on this side of the, the screen, we are elderly. Over on that side of the screen, uh, Jeff and Braden are are well. Braden still still climbing into his. Uh, Elder years, Jeff's. I can, uh, I can still be Braden's dad. So, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Braden, did they pick on you like this before your off oh, episodes? I, I mean, never, never, never. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, oh, we clown all day long. That's Man, awesome. You, you see my mustache? It's easy to make fun of me. <laughs> that's a that's a manly mustache though, dude. Thank you, thank you. You, thank so, you, you rock know, that it's, mustache. It's funny he's always around uh, the Mormon elders, you know, the youngsters. Mm. But now he's around real elders. See, I know <laughs> that's fact. As a matter of fact, fact, I am an elder at my church. I am an elder. Exactly. (laughs) So uh, that being said, let's let's go around the table, Jeff. Let's start with you. Um, And and, and I'll just and and I'll let our audience know right up front. The the goal and the aim of having you guys on is is that we want um, our small audience to get to know you so that they can understand the work that you all are doing, understand the importance and the value of the work that y'all are doing. Okay. So Jeff, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about who you are, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> well, my name is Jeff Rice. Um, I am married to my wife, Catherine Rice. I ha- we have a litter of kids um, and uh, we live in Tallahoma, Tennessee. Uh me and her both run post tender breast Lux Bible rebinding. And uh, I also pastor Covenant Reform Baptist Church here in Tallahoma, Tennessee. And uh, I'm also a street evangelist. I've been doing that for probably around 12 years. That's awesome. uh, and, uh, and, and, and that's, well, it looks like someone got cut off. Um, but that's, Perhaps. yeah. That's pretty much it about me, uh, unless you want to know something more specific. No, that's good. That's good to start us out. We'll, yeah. uh, the specifics will come out as we talk. All right. Braden, how about you? Yeah, uh, Braden Patterson. I am so fortunate and blessed to be saved by God's grace and uh, also be blessed with a, a wonderful wife that I've been married to now for almost coming on five years next month. Uh, we have one? two children, uh, one shepherd, one Owen. Um, and then uh, I pastor, I'm so privileged to pastor just at a small church over in Hagerman, Idaho, uh, just going to preach Christ crucified every Sunday. And then um, I'm XLDS, um, which praise God for the X part of that. And uh, Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Praise so. the Lord, guys. 
Praise the Lord. I'm not sure what happened with Haps there, but we'll we'll, we'll swing back around to him. So so in, in the really important things, um, w- one of the important things that I'd like for you all to share tonight, if you would, if you don't mind, uh, share uh, share with us your testimony of salvation. Um, so we ended with Braden. We'll start with Braden, then we'll come back to Jeff and then get Haps when he comes back. You know, that's a really great question. So my my coming from my background that I looked at my own filthy rags that I know now that are filthy rags. And I, I look to my works, uh, enduring to the end, my obedience, my righteousness to save me. It's now solely looking at Jesus Christ, uh, him who knew no sin becoming sin on my behalf so that I might be made the righteous of God in him. And so my, the assurance of my salvation is nothing that I have done but simply to the cross of Christ that I'm clinging to. And so that's where my assurance is, is that God and flesh paid the price for me. Amen. Amen. Jeff, how about you? Yeah, man. So I'm a product of 9-11. Um, I'm an ex-game banging. You know, he's ex-Mormon. I'm an ex-game banger. Um, I was sitting out in a, an old trailer park somewhere in Nashville, Tennessee, playing hacky sack and drinking a beer, smoking a joint. And all of a sudden, people start running out of the trailers, talking about uh, the world was going, world is ending, that this is in the Bible. And oh wow, you know, I was like, "What are y'all talking about?" And talking, and the planes are going into buildings. And and that day, I picked up a Bible for the first time, started reading it. And uh, over the next couple of years, I started going to church and listened to a street preacher by the name of Ray Comfort. Um, yeah. I had already been attending church matter of fact i'm teaching sunday school um part of a youth group leading a youth group and then i heard the gospel very very clearly from him saw myself naked and exposed uh, truly called upon the name of the lord and um but ever since 9 11 i've been reading the bible faithfully every day and uh growing in the knowledge of the lord uh, he saved. He saved me. Uh, you know, he, he, him, in eternity, reached into time and removed this stick from the fire, and he is continually saving me through this same gospel message. Amen. So, as a reformed believer, I not I, not only do I believe that in justification by faith, um, that this is something that God does to me, but I also believe in sanctification through the same gospel that, that, that God saves me. He faiths me and he repents me through the message of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, his life, death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. 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 Thank you all for sharing that. So very, very important. It's not necessarily having a day and a, specific time nailed down but it's knowing that you've been born again that you've been made a new creature that the old things as the scripture states are passing away and all things are become new i heard it said from adrian rogers he says uh if 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 you and i are both going to california and you drive and i fly and when you're driving you know the exact moment that you come into california and though i am flying i do not know the exact moment i yeah. get into california but the point is is we're both in california amen <laughs> amen so um so talk to us a little bit if you would guys mm. about um about open air theology how did how did y'all come together how did y'all meet well for, for the most part, it's just Facebook. I mean, you know, um, yeah. I met Haps through Facebook. Uh, you know, we kind of uh, went back and forth a little bit, talking here and there through through Messenger. And, you know, I listened to a few of his videos. He listened to some of the stuff I was doing. Yeah. Uh, he came and visited, visited this area, and he come and hung out with me, and he, and he had me on his podcast. And then ever since then, we were – a dead set that we were going to have some kind of a podcast together. And, uh, and in the process of this, Braden reached out to me and he sent me a video of him uh, witnessing to Mormons. And, uh, and I listened to it and I was like, I got to have this guy on my team. Praise <laughs> the Lord. And so I reached out to him and uh, was very persistent that, uh, you know, he was one of my new best friends. And, <laughs> And uh, we just hit it off, man. And so, 
I don't know. So, if, I don't know if you remember the story that way or not. <laughs> so how do you remember it, Braden? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I think you hit it nail spot on right there. I, I was reaching out to you because I, I, I seen, I mean, just as every reform guy does, we have our, our certain group of people that we follow. And so I, I remember hearing James White years ago, talk about post tenebrous Lux and, and so just watching more and more, I was like, oh, yeah, I, this Jeff guy is definitely somebody I want to hang out with and talk with more and more. And uh, so I eventually just sent him that. I I, I like sharing uh, the moments I get to express the gospel to different people. And so I was like, I got to share this, send this to to Jeff. And uh, he actually watched it, which was which was a blessing. And then so uh, we just kind of started interacting, interacting from that. And so it was. Very nice, very nice. So, as far as are you guys, as, are you guys by chance getting really bad service on your end? Uh, from you, I am. Yeah, not, not no, just on okay. just from your your side. I, I'm super far behind on your guys' side. Okay, copy that. All right. Um. So, as far as as theology goes, how um. How do you all, as a, as a, we'll call you a team, as open air theology group? It's down to two. That's down to the two of us, Jeff. <laughs> How do Maybe you? Maybe he's all... just backing out and coming in. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. Here comes Braden back. Let's click him in here. There you are. How is the sound now? There we go. I guess a potato gives you the best Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of Wi-Fi? Uh, a potato one. I got a recipe Idaho potato downstairs <laughs> running my Wi-Fi. So <laughs> don't you guys? What do you guys use? <laughs> no, so I'm, I might I might be breaking it out. I apologize, guys. It's 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 pretty laggy on my side of things. All right, no problem. It sounds a lot better now. Does it? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Tr just don't make any sudden actions. Your camera won't have to Nothing. make adjustments there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, all right. So, so theology, as far as theology goes, guys, um, obviously <laughs> you, as you all stated, you met, you, uh, you kind of came together, um, uh, on Facebook, which a lot of us have, you know, um, I know, that's how I came to know about post tenebrous lux. And then, and then, you know, over the time, just kind of watching Jeff's, Jeff's stuff on there. And then we got to finally meet up at, at G3, which was very cool, very nice. Um, and, but as far as the theology goes, how, um, obviously you recognized each other's theology, but how did you all decide that, this is what we're going to land on. I know y'all started with a, um, a a couple of different names, right? Right off the bat, Jeff. Yeah. Um, so the at first we was shooting for um, the Black Sheep Gang, mm -hmm. and uh, reason being that the the Reformed Baptist is the Black Sheep of the Reformation. And, and, and we still plan to do something with that maybe in the future as if, if, if the page grows and we might want to have like some extra content and, 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 and we might have like an extra page where this extra content only will be posted. And those, you know, like for, for, for those who decide to support the, what we're doing in the Reformation. And so and so in order to be a part of this, you will be included in the black sheep gang. So right. it's just something for the future. Okay. And so I thought that I would put that on the side and kind of develop that later. And then, and then like in, in the heat of the moment, we had grace covenant. Uh, mm -hmm. So the covenant of grace is, 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 is one of my favorite topics to speak about, especially as a reformed Baptist, a 1689 federalist. So I would view, the covenant of grace different from the, uh, the Presbyterian brothers. And, uh, and it's, that's and it, actually and, what I was going to, I was going to ask that. And, uh, I'm glad you already addressed that. So I yeah. was going to say yeah. 1689. It, yeah. Or yeah. Westminster. Life. You could be Westminster, uh, but 
you should be 1689. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> and so Grace Covenant was just You're like 99 percent of the, the words. Way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Grace Covenant, I was just twisting the words around because uh, Covenant of Grace podcast didn't sound good. So Grace Covenant. And then I was just twiddling with it and thought, man, we just need something that's more catchy. And it, it was it was hard to say, like I'd be trying to introduce it and I'd just get tongue tied. And so and then every one of us do open air preaching. Yes. And so I was thinking about the open air preaching and we're all real theology nerds. And so I just kind of put the two together, open air theology, and they concurred. And here we are. <laughs> Very nice. So, Braden, so as as far as um, um, open air preaching, how long have you been open air preaching? You know, I, that's a really good question. So after after I left being LDS and uh, immediately after I was saved, I almost immediately wanted to start doing open air stuff. And so I had the privilege of being discipled by Matt Slick uh, from Carm.org. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and and so hanging out with him, being around his his peeps and, and being a peep of his and um uh, <laughs> It just kind of came with it. So I, I would almost say almost day one coming out of the gate. So I've been saved now for over seven years. And so um, over a little over seven years is how long I've been doing open air witnessing. Praise the Lord. What do you find? Uh, what did you find uh, at the beginning was probably one of the biggest um, hurdles or obstacles that you, you, yeah. that you faced? You know, that's a really good question. I, I got to give credit to Matt. He really, he really helped uh he really encouraged me in different ways. So, so he actually was like, Brayden, if you want to get good at debating and talking to people in, in person about this kind of stuff, you need to go online to different forums. And he gave me a list of forums that he suggested. And he just said, just go and argue with people. Just go and, and, and talk theology, give the gospel and you're going to fail. You're not going to know how to answer questions, but you're going to get better mm-hmm. after every single conversation. And, and so even taking that to the street and just knowing, look, I have a, a, a Lord and master who's worthy to be talked about. I am going to go out and find that I don't have answers to all the questions, uh, and, yeah. but I'll get better at it. And so seven years later now, man, uh, it, it's, it's a blessing to have people come up and talk and engage in those ways and know how to direct them because I have failed in the past. And, and so those are definitely some of the hurdles, uh, you know, I, and I, I think I can speak for almost every evangelist that the, the, the biggest hurdle is just getting your mouth open. It's just starting the conversation. It's just introducing yeah. yourself. And I mean, it, it's as simple as saying, who is Jesus Christ to somebody that's walking by and then you're off, right? And, uh, but it's just that intimidation of, of, of starting. And once you start, you just can't stop talking about Jesus Christ, I found. So getting started was the biggest obstacle there. So how about you, Jeff? Yeah. Well, yeah. I would say still starting is the biggest obstacle. Like, you know, I, I always lead off with that. Hey, my name is yeah. Jeff. I'm the pastor of Covenant Reformed Baptist Church. I'm out here today just to let you know that I love you. I do not come out here because I hate you. I come out here because I love you. Like, right. like getting those words out, are, it's, it's the hardest. But um, so, again, um, because I am a product yeah of 9-11 and a product of Ray Comfort Street Ministry. Of course, I do things a little different. I'm just, I, I do what he does, but in a reformed way. Like I've, I've kind of reformed that method of, of, of preaching and, and witnessing. Um, so I, what do you I, mean I have by a high appreciation. Well, I just, I just go about it a, a little different. So I, I, I actually teach a text. So I find a text and I just preach the text instead of just going out there trying to debate someone Uh, and i have a different aspect of when it comes to witnessing Um, like i I just go about it a little different now i i definitely use the same rules that he used when it comes to the 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 three uses of the law so the first use of the law being uh, you use the law to bring someone from to the from the not from the knowledge of i mean you want to take them you want to use the law to show them that they're in Adam, which I don't think he would use those words. And you want to t- bring them from Adam to Christ. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I, uh, sure. so it's the, so Ray Comfort did not invent uh, 
you know, have you ever told a lie? You ever stole something? You ever (laughs) (laughs) like this? All right. Right. Yeah. This is something that the reformed Christians and the Lutherans did. And it's the three uses of the law. Of course, the Lutherans and the reform would reverse the, the numbering. So we would say that the first use is you bring someone from Adam to Christ and they would say that that's the second use. And what we would call the second use is the law. It's kind of like the government uses the law as a curb. They would say that that's the first use. Mm -hmm. Right. And so because I am a product of street ministry and I know that it works because I was saved through it. uh, Right out the gate, like as soon as I saw this, I started learning about it. But because there was no one that was passionate about it, I was afraid to attempt to do it by myself. Yeah. But then the Lord put me in by his providence with, with, with someone by the name of Jamie Terry, a good friend of mine. And uh, and he wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. And so we just got out there and started doing it. And this was probably this was uh, 2000, 2011. But the first time I ever preached was in 2010, downtown Nashville on the streets. And uh, it was terrifying being by myself, really. Um so me and him just started doing it. We started going door to door. We started hanging out at walk at, at parks where, you know, people would you had that walking trail and we'd stand at that trail, pass out tracks and witness one on one. And finally, we just started, you know, building ourselves up to stand on a box and preach. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you mentioned the uses of the law. I think um, Ligonier has a great um, article on their website. Um Basically, you know, Cal- how Calvin crystallized the youth, the three uses of the law, yep. the first being a mirror reflecting to yep. us both the righteousness of God and our own sinfulness. The second is the civil use, because and you had mentioned that, Jeff. Yeah. And then yeah. The so third, a good way to remember it, it's mirror, curb and guide. Right. That's yeah. exactly right. It guides the regenerate into the good yeah. works that God's yeah. plan. Yeah. For so the third use of the law is for Christians. First use is well, it, but the first use you use it for the loss but you also need to use it you preach the gospel to yourself as well amen the, the the second use is more on the lines of, of our government they can use the law to keep free people from being as evil mm-hmm. as they as they could be and the third use that's is right. for christians we read the bible in light of what christ has done that's right and govern ourselves by that yeah that's right that's right so uh, uh along and go, let's go back let's circle around back around to something that you said earlier that it really caught my attention when you when you were sharing your testimony um the the church right the church is precious to the lord that's what the scriptures teach us right he gave his life for the church and um I think what we see a lot of times, Jeff, as you had mentioned, uh, you said you were you were leading a youth group. Yeah, I was one of the leaders. Saved. I was one of right. the leaders of a youth group. I was teaching Sunday school. Right. Yeah. And but the but your that was before you you were born again, right? Before you were regenerated, made new, I, I, made a new creature. I do believe so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I do believe so. I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything. No, I'm no, just trying to yeah. get my head around it because where I'm going with this, <clears throat> because I think that one of the big issues that we see in the church today is unregenerate leadership. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, the the desire, you all can get, just give me your opinion on this here in just a second. Let me <laughs> figure out how to formulate this best. Um I- if this would help, I walked up, like when they gave an altar call, I walked up to get saved, and all they asked me was, where are you coming from? And then I told them what church I went to previously when I was like 12, and they turned to the congregation and they said, now, do we welcome him to into membership? Boom, like, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. Was, and I was like, like yeah. I didn't know what was going on, right? And so, yeah, and, and, and but, but we see it trickles down. You know, it, it kind of trickles down. And, and as we get older and, and, and Braden, man, I want to, I want to say something real quick to you. I am, uh, dude, I am uh, blown away and impressed by the, the guy you had on here a while back that you were debating with. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, at your demeanor, at your calm, at your wisdom, <laughs> at just the, the way that you answered those questions, dude, I, I just want to commend you i mean scripture says um, that we shouldn't have praise of ourselves but we all have praise of another and i want to publicly uh, praise you for that 
for the, your stand in the Lord and your ability to speak with clarity there. Uh, but again, going back to the church, if if as the church that we don't have theological, which are a.k.a. plain talk, biblical standards, right, for leadership from the ground up in the church, then we see generation after generation literally being fed a false narrative, a false gospel, a false idea of what a Christian is, of what a Christian is to do, right? Um, And that, it's just, it perpetuates itself. It goes over and over and over and over and over. So how do you all feel? No, that's not the right question. Good grief. Alistair Begg would bust me in the mouth for that. (laughs) <laughs> how y'all feel today <laughs> right what are y'all what's your all's thoughts on uh the importance of rigid biblical standards for church leadership mm. let's start with you Braden. this time I, I think it's absolutely uh so important and and i think we see the byproduct of it in almost every united states pulpit today is that we have clowns that are preaching and because of that then we have unregenerate people that are or maybe not even unregenerate people, people that just don't know that are yeah. in these positions. And and how how can somebody uh, be a leader if they if they if they can't even speak educatedly on, on the word of God? Or yeah. um, th- these are these are things that uh, are so important, so so important to to make sure that a, a a person is qualified for the call, and and that they are continually call or qualify that they're continually seeking after the glory of God. Otherwise, like I said, you're going to have people that just uh, like you said, how do you feel about this? You're going to have people that are meeting people's feelings in these areas. Yeah. They're going to be people that are feeding the the feel good emotion stuff rather than actually feeding them spiritually using God's word uh, as that standard for it. Amen. So let's let's hit this point now too, because yeah, I was I was triggered. If I'd had a sh- if I had a shaking effect, <laughs> I would do the shaking effect now. Um, that 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 word, uh, I, I, w- Jeff. What would you say about this? That uh, in our uh, and we'll call it reform circles, right? There is a tendency, uh, in, in and again, um, I would. Guess would I be incorrect, Braden, if I said in the uh, in the LDS uh, that it was a pretty uh, was it pretty strict and rigid and quiet and calm in the service? And we're I'm talking about the church service. Maybe not, maybe not um, calm, uh, but very very rigid. There was no, I mean, they would they would use heart emotions to sway mm-hmm. people, but there was no power of the cross in their in their. Talk. It was very so, boring. It's yeah, very that's, boring. That's a okay. good way of saying it. Yeah. And so Jeff, Jeff's coming from a uh from a you know, I'm 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 I understand and know exactly where Jeff Jeff and I are coming from the same spots. We've got the same same people, the same uh the same motions that people go through. Uh, you know, country in the country church, if you ain't if the preacher ain't shouting or somebody <laughs> didn't shout didn't rejoice, then we didn't have a good service. The, the right. spirit wasn't there, it was dead. Uh, the uh, the the uh, flip side of that is in reform circles. I think that even still to this day, that there is a tendency for reform folk to veer completely away from emotion and veer, you know, kind of into the stoic deadness. Yeah, uh, the frozen and, chosen. Yeah, frozen chosen. And so, Jeff, how do how do you think we that we as reformed folks? And reformed pastors can rightly shepherd and teach and lead our congregations, the the, the congregations that the Lord has made us under shepherds over. Yeah. How can we lead we them to, and guide them into a balance in biblical worship? I think first, the, the, the minister, the true worship leader, has to recognize the two sides of the ditches. Mm-hmm. You know, we yes, have sir. to recognize that, and we have to drive the car and not wreck it. That's right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Keep it between the lines. Yeah, we yeah. have to keep it between yeah. the lines. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, Martin Lloyd Jones. You know, he, you know, like you're a part of our, you know, the group that we have on Facebook, preaching and preachers. Yes. 
And one of the things that said was that that preaching is theology on fire. That's right. Right. And so we want to be educated when it comes to theology, but we, we do not want to be passionless. Less. Amen. Am I saying that right? <laughs> without right. passion. Without passion. We don't want right. to be without passion. All right. Uh, and, 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 and that's just something that, that it's beyond me. Like, like I would rather be uneducated with passion and learn and, and and then be educated versus to be educated and without passion because you cannot be taught passion. That's right. All right. You know, uh, I do not want to be That's a right. talking head in the pulpit. That's right. And, and, and in order for my congregation to be passionate, mm. they need to see their pastor driving the cart without wrecking it off with the two ditches. Amen. Right? Jeff. They don't need to see me running around the mm. room. All right. But they do need to see me passionate about God. All right. They don't need uh, to see me um, uh, so calm that I'm afraid to say hallelujah. Amen. You know, what I'm saying? When, I, when, I, when, when I feel it. And so we've heard the saying as goes. The king, so I mean, as goes the king, so does the kingdom. You know, as mm -hmm. goes the pulpit, so goes the ministry. Yeah, but again, as goes the pastor, so goes the congregation. Mm -hmm. Right? The, uh, the 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 sheep are going to reflect their shepherd. Yeah. If their shepherd's abusing them, they're going to be abused sheep. They're going to, you know, be flinchy. They're not going to know how to act. Yeah. But I think you know when yeah. they see that the shepherd is 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 is. is, is is, is someone who is passionate about Christ, but also yeah. serious when it comes to theology. It's going to be infectious. It's going to rub off. Amen. And so you, you just got to know how to drive. Right. And, and I mean, and this really is, seems like our conversations keeps leading us into pastoral theology. So, and as far as you talked about, uh, Jeff, being able to keep, keep it between the lines as the pastor, as the people, as the pastor goes, so goes the people. Um, Braden, what would you say about uh, the importance of the, the, the pastor and the elders of a congregation? How should the pastor and the elders of a congregation love the congregation? It's mm. Yeah, I just I'm picturing Jeff right now running around the room and his beard just splitting and going up on his shoulders as he just <laughs> runs around saying hallelujah. That's the all wind, I think like, about like right on a motorcycle. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, you got to do that this Sunday. You got to do it, Jeff. Dude, uh, <laughs> most of my congregation would leave. <laughs> like I got one family, uh, the, the Hawtons, which is just an amazing, amazing family. Mm. And um uh, so they sit in the very back. They are the definition of back row Baptist. <laughs> and uh, so I raise my hands with sometimes in worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in a the doxology, like I just go wall out and I'm raising my hands. <laughs> well, their kids, their kids have started raising their hands. And, Praise and the like, Lord. Uh, the, um, you know, the husband and wife, like, like they don't like they and and and, and the what and the, in the world's going on one day, <laughs> and the wife was telling me one day uh lauren is her name and she, and she looked over or it might have been alex the husband he said he looked over and saw her, her, her his daughter uh rocking back and forth with her hands up he's like hey stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we could, look, like, but, but, but they see me doing it right praise the lord yep. and and, yep. and and that's true the, the yeah. pastor is uh, um the worship leader but back to back to my question to you Brandon. Yeah, there absolutely how, how should the pastor and the elders love the congregation what should that look like so let me let me read out a revelation real fast for us revelation okay. chapter five uh, verses seven, uh, just let's go to seven to 10. It just says in here, and he came, this is Jesus. It's that he's coming. The lamb that was slain is coming up and he came and took it out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Mm -hmm. And he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having each one, a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying worthy, are thou to take the book and to break its seals for thou was slain and didst purchase for me God with thy blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation 
and thou hast made them to be a kingdom, priests, uh, to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. And then it says down in verse 12, worthy is the lamb that was slain. That these are these are these 24 elders that we are seeing worshiping Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so when I approach the pulpit, my mission in glorifying God through the, the, the preaching of his word, I've heard people say, well, you want to preach a sermon. So like Jesus was sitting on the cross in the, in the front row and could say amen to everything you're saying. I understand that thinking. I, I don't look at it like that. I, I look and I, I see fellow sheep in the con congregation in the, in the seats. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be looking down in the word of God with me. And I want to be clearly describing the attributes of Jesus so that each one of us could say, worthy art thou to take the book. And I want them to be saying this. And if Christ himself was to come again and he's behind me, that when they lift their head from the Bible and their ears are, are, are hearing the trumpet of God and, and are not hearing my preaching anymore, but that the, the very God that they were reading about and the very God that they were hearing about is the very God that they're looking at and praising. And so I think as a, as a pastor, I want because I love God and I, and I want him to be worshiped properly, adequately honored and, and sought after. I, I want my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to see the same God in the Bible that we're all seeing and to worship him as that. And so uh, as a pastor, as an elder, loving my congregation is, is by telling them about who Jesus Christ is so that he can receive better worship today. Amen. Amen. And that's the, that's the, that should be the chief, the first, first and foremost thing. Amen. That yep. is the that is the responsibility of the elders yeah. to to ensure sound doctrine is proclaimed first and foremost, and that's worked out number one. And that's comes from love, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's not. It doesn't come from a, a. We're not talking about the the feel good, you know, the the lovey dovey stuff. We're talking about the love of God. Yeah. Uh, what, who uh, was it, Paul? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, mm. right? And it's it's poured out. Yeah. In the past. Well, uh, man, I, I, I want to serve those people that are in my church. I want to take care of them. I, I want to help them. I want to pray with them. I want to I want to meet their needs. I want to show them. Uh, I want to keep on pointing them to the cross at every chance I can get. And so that, that's truly what I think is is a hallmark of a. Of a of a pastor that's it's attempting to do a good job behind the pulpit is one that's just com continually has his finger pointing up at the at Jesus Christ upon his throne. Amen. Amen. Get behind the cross. Yeah. Behind the cross. Yeah. You can't go wrong there. <laughs> the cross before me and the world behind me. Amen. So none go with me. That's right. Still, I will follow. And so yeah. few. Do you all know the history of that song? Uh, I, I have decided it. to follow Jesus. Oh, yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. History yeah, it has that. nothing to do with an Armenian theology. That's exactly <laughs> Wait, right. what? It's it's yeah. a literally about a man saying, look, I'll die for Christ. I will yeah. follow Christ. Though none yeah. go with me. So, uh, so guys, it's uh, it's getting late here again. You all, I know, have been so gracious and so kind to be on with us tonight. I would love to extend this conversation. Maybe we can get together again before too much longer. Uh, you all name the, the day and the time, and I will be there for you all. I want to, again, publicly say thank you to all of you for your ministry, for your love to the Lord, and uh, for your fellowship in the gospel. So let's do this. Let's ask Jeff, if you would, sir, close us out with a gospel proclamation. All right, well, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm kind of a little tore up by your ending. <laughs> um, and I just want to first say, you know, uh, it, it's a pleasure being on and, you know, and and I truly love you. Praise and, uh, You know, and, and I value your friendship. And the gospel message is, is simply this, is, is it's that we have broken God's law. And God has paid our fine. Amen. And, and I'll go through that real quick. Um, every one of us have fallen in Adam. And it's not that we sin because we're sinners or that we're sin because we're in Adam. We sin because we prove that the Bible is true, that we have fallen in Adam. 
We are born sinners worthy of God's holy, holy, holy wrath. We deserve this. Yeah. One bite of a fruit caused the whole world to fall. Yeah. One bite caused the whole world to fall. But God in his love sent his son, Jesus Christ, to remove the bite. Adam, when he took a bite of that fruit, we all fell in him. And not only that, but the whole earth was cursed in him. Jesus comes, and because of what he has done through his life, through his death, his burial and resurrection, he Amen. is removing this curse. He is removing the fall. He lived the life that we could not live, and he died the death that we deserve to die. The Bible says Amen. that, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, and it's faith in what he has done. Not Amen. faith in what you can do, but faith in what he has done. Amen. So the gospel message is, is just simply that we have broken God's law because we are in Adam. We prove that the Bible is true when it says that by sinning, by breaking his law. But God has paid our fine by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to be the propitiation. Amen. The word propitiation means, in layman's term, a payment for wrongdoing. We have done wrong. God in eternity past has reached into his pocket and he pulled out his eternal son to pay our fine, the fine that we could not pay. And Amen. that is perfection. Jesus yeah. comes, lives the perfect life, dies an atoning death. And by grace through faith, you and I can be with him in eternity and have that everlasting life right now Amen. by trusting in what God has done for us in Christ. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. guys, Braden, where can we find you all? Where can folks that watch this? There may oh. be there may be a whole 5, 10, 15 people that watch this. <laughs> where can these 15 people uh, get in touch with you? And then Jeff will have you tell us where we can get in touch with you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, Pastor Braden, again, Valley Baptist Church in Hagerman, Idaho. If you are in that area, I'd love for you to come to church, worship God with us. Uh, preach Christ crucified and it's a privilege doing so. Uh, and you can find me on reformed ex Mormon, uh, for my YouTube channel, uh, where we just discuss anything, theology, evangelism experiences, so on and so forth. And then, uh, yeah, that, that's the places to find myself. Please reach out. If you are, uh, LDS, uh, I, I have to give a shout out if you're LDS and you're wanting to know about more about the Christ that we're speaking about, because, uh, if you're LDS, you have a different Jesus than what we're talking about. And so That's I want right. to talk with you about that. And if you're ex-LDS and you want to uh, be walked to the cross, uh, I would love to point you in the right direction. Amen. Jeff, how about you? Well, uh, Open Air Theology is the podcast that we all do together. And there's a Facebook page that you can like and, you know, be able to comment. And there's also one that you can join. That's open air theology. But me personally, if you if you message through there, I'll definitely be able to answer message you back. But personally, I have a, a, a YouTube channel that all this goes through. And on it, I'm a part of three different podcasts. So the YouTube channel is uh, is a my two cents with Jeff Rice. And from that, we have open air theology that flows through it. And then we also have trailer park theology that flows through it. But um, other than that. Again, I pastor Covenant Reformed Baptist Church in Tallahoma, Tennessee. That website is covenantrbctn.com, covenantrbctn.com. You can reach out that way, or the, probably the easiest way to reach out would be through either My Two Cents on Facebook or uh, Open Air Theology on Facebook. Amen. And let's not forget about Post Tenebras Lux. Yes. Jeff is the Bible rebinder and the the Bible fixer upper of <laughs> Braden. Mine's uh, mine's over there, so I can't climb over the table right I'll now. I'll get, get a little it. quick uh, 3D view for everybody. <laughs> That's exactly right. If you want the best quality rebind or quality new Bible rebind <laughs> if there is such a thing oh, uh, go is. to post tenebras lux you'll get quality yeah. work you'll have to wait for it but you gotta it's worth the wait so yeah, if you talk but but on that you will not be talking to me you'll be talking to my wife but of course she's used to everyone talking to her thinking they're talking to me 
So, yeah, I was wondering. I wondered that a couple of years back when I when I ordered that Bible. <laughs> I wondered if that wasn't your wife on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, she, she she kicked me off from running things for a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I, I I couldn't do it all, and uh, so she quit her job. She was a lawyer, and she quit her job wow. to be a part of the business. Mm. Praise the Lord. Well, guys, I'm going to play us out on the intro. Hang tight here for just or with the outro. Uh, hang tight for just a minute. We'll yep. come back and talk for just a second, and then we'll we'll. Do it.